Hello everyone, DCP here, and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to turn uh, a plain base into a lava base, giving you the painting guides and showing you on many different models, so you can see the results varying from base to base. I hope that you enjoy. So first of all, the bases, what I do, is to give them a spray with my fist and red. We've always, for any sort of spray, Spray base, give it a good shake. It's recommended to shake it for up to two minutes, which obviously I won't do on screen. So that was two minutes. Let us spray the bases. Now the spray we leave them to dry for about an hour or two. Right, so now that spray is dry, you can see it's quite dark, so let's lighten it up. Which I'm using uh, some Evil Sun Scarlet. You can use any sort of red you want, but I prefer Evil Sun Scarlet. It's not too dark, it's not too light, but it will help increase the validity and veracity of the red. So just making sure I get myself a uh, piece of what's it called again paper not paper a palette me palette i forgot to get me palette ready there it is me palette now let's get this red shaken up once i've got me br stuff up always shake my paints from the pots it just helps it flow easier and make sure it's not too clumpy we'll need a bit of water for this as well to help make it go a bit longer so i'm using a large brush for this Get me uh, either some scarlet, put it on there like that, so you can see it's a bit lumpy. Don't like lumpy paint, so we need a bit of water. Do that. Not only does this thin the paint out, but makes it spread more evenly over the model base or whatever. So laying it over the darker edge, you can see already how much lighter that is. This just gives a more intense red for the background helping it stand out against the other colors that we're going to put on top of it. I'm going to do this for each one like this. And as you can see, just plopping it on. You can, of course, put two layers on if you want. I am only putting one layer on because that's the way I like to do things. But, well, I just like to do them that way. We're going to get the rest of these done off screen. Uh, leave them to dry for a bit. Uh, drying can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much paint you put on it. As I say, I recommend that if you want to do it in multiple layers, please do so. I just do it in one layer, as that's the way I like to do things. And you can already see the difference from the two, well, three now that I've painted, and the rest of the ones which are still on their basic spray base. I'm gonna let these dry and come back to them, get the rest of the next bit done. Now the Everson Scarlet has dried, unfortunately we got a bit of light bleeding which doesn't help. But hopefully you can see there that the red does look a lot more stronger and a lot more lighter and you can see it a lot more easier. I'm gonna use two oranges, Trollsa Orange and Fire Dragon Bright. I'm gonna begin with the um, Trosser orange, and we're going to be using the well. I'll use a small dry brush. You can, of course, use any sort of dry brush you want. Uh, technique for this one's a bit different. So, obviously, give the paint a shake. It always helps to get the uh, paint nice and loose. Open it up, and we take it from the top part of the paint. The top that's in there, and then with our base, we dab it. We dab it randomly wherever we like to dab it. Going back to where we went before, and just working it like that. Now, if you want to do this a different way, 
you can use a toilet, uh, any sort of um, paper to help get the paint off the bristles. I prefer doing it this way as it gives a stronger colour underneath, meaning that the heat is a bit more intense of the of the lava, making it, in my opinion, a lot more intense anyway. Of course, you can try different sort of techniques, um, but I like doing it this way as it's, well, what I prefer, and I say just randomly put it anywhere. I'm going to randomly put it in lots of places. I'm going to do it for each individual base. They're never going to be exactly in the same place, but you still get the idea. And that gives a sort of warm orange glow. Just do one more here rather quickly. Let's just do it in different places. The reason I dab it on is it just, well, it looks better. It just helps give that impression of the heat glowing and changing colours for different temperatures. That's those ones, moving on, letting them dry afterwards and uh, getting on to the next layer. So the next layer, uh, after we've got off this dry with the uh, Trollsail Orange, is Fire Dragon Bright. Uh, it's a different kind of orange, a sort of yellowy orange, but well, that one's more of a orange orange. Yes, I know, descriptions. Once again, using the same sort of method as I did with the Troll Sarah Orange. Grabbing up a bit, and then we put this, once again, where we like. Where the Troll Sarah Orange isn't. And as you can already see, it's a lot brighter, more of a yellow, than the um, orange of the Troll Sarah Orange. Once again, putting this in random places all over where I want to on these particular bases to just, let's say, help give the illusion of different kinds of heat throughout the lava bases. I'm going to be repeating this on all models. The reason I keep going back to that one is just to help dull down the amount of paint on that particular uh, base because I did overload it just a little bit. So as I say, I'll finish the rest of these off, off camera and then once they'll dry, I'll show you them what they look like and then we can continue on with the rest of this guide. So now as you can see I've done all the basic painting of random blobs of the two oranges and the reds. Uh, each one as you can see is a different sort of pattern. Now before we go on to uh, the pit, the specific kind of paint that will help make the lava effect, we are going to put some Ard coat on it. Uh, what Ard coat is, is it's a varnish, a gloss, if you will. Uh, this just helps with the next layer of paint actually stick to uh, what we've done, and it also helps protect the base from any corrosion from it because uh, of the way that the um, next special paint works. Now, because we need it, it doesn't go onto a palette, unlike other paints. Just give it a wash over, like so. Now you see it's actually made it a bit darker. It's fine at the moment. Once it's dry, it will actually be a lot lighter. Because I'll see the shimmer already from that particular one. If I do this one as well, just over the top, need a bit more. There we go. And for doing these big ones as well. Of course, you can do this with the small bases for standing miniatures. So, like warriors and cultists and stuff like that. Or any sort of model that you want to have a lava base. It doesn't have to be a chaos model. It doesn't have to be a demon model. It can even be a, an orc on a lava base, a tiered on a la uh, lava base from 40k. It can even be non-Warhammer -war and um, Games Workshop models. And in fact, you can use this technique for anything that you want to put on a lava base. There's that one. So I'll do the rest of these off camera 
and then once they're dry we'll come back to them and I'll show you the next step. Now hopefully as you can see the varnish hard coat has dried on all the bases making them a bit more shiny um, than oils normal. This is as I say to help with the application of the next paint. Oh, which is a Kraken paint, um, which is well known as Mordant Earth in uh, the Games Workshop range. It basically cracks, which is why you really need to put the varnish on so it protects the paint underneath as well as the base. With this particular paint, as you can see, you really, really need to shake it a lot. The more you shake it, the more it cracks the better the result. Now it's not 100% perfect, which you'll see when it dries, but first of all, let's get some of this done. So, see it's quite thick and black. Take some of it, get on here. Now you want pulls of it, like that. You don't want it too thin on there. And you don't want to brush it on, you want to dab it on like I am. The thicker it is, the better it cracks. Now you're thinking, you're covering, I'm covering the areas that I've painted. Yes, I say when it dries, you'll see why. So just put on thick bits Thing bits, gloopy bits, however you want it to go on. Think about where you want your massive gloops, where you want it to crack more, where you want it to crack less. Or you want it to crack less, you want it thinner, or you want it to crack more, you want it thicker. And do it all over the base. Keep taking it, keep dabbing it on. By dabbing it, it becomes much more consistent effect and if you were to brush it on and it also stops any sort of brush strokes or marks being left into it because of the way that this paint is formulated it's very easily so see there it actually shows that it's brushed on if I dab it much better. Now this needs to dry for 24 hours and you'll see what it looks like when it's dry. I'll do the rest of these off camera and then you can see all the different effects that this technique uses or gets should I say. And there we have it. All the uh, cracker paint I had left of the Mordia turf has been applied means unfortunately I've not been able to do all the bases but you sort of get an idea of what happened. Uh, so this one and this one unfortunately it didn't work too well. Uh, it's not 100% but we have some nice ones with this one. Look at that. Cracking up through the earth there. Same with that one. Oh, doesn't that look cool? Definitely looks like a lava sort of base bubbling up from the surface. One of the better ones. This one's probably like the best one because it's near enough all over the place. Look at that. Doesn't that look like lava? That one's not too bad. That one's just got on one side, which doesn't matter too much. It doesn't have to be uniform. It would be nice if it had a bit more in some, a bit less in others. But yeah, there we are. That's that's how I do my lava bases, and um, 
hopefully that's inspired you and given you some tips on how to do lava bases if you want to do lava bases. As you can see, and as I've shown you, it's not 100% and it does differ quite a lot from base to base, even if you do the same technique for each base. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Like the video if you liked it. Watch any other videos you like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until the next one, this is DCB. Knowledge is power if we use it wisely.